instructional part of the video, check the description box below in your YouTube player for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about the sound tools I'm using today. We'll talk about this guitar more later in the vid. Um, links to my Patreon, like and subscribe to my channel if the content is interesting to you. It helps me out when you do that. Now let's talk about playing Leapy and Skronky. Obviously, first things first, let's talk about the main chord progression that we're jamming over. It's gonna be a B minor, we can see it on both hands. Yeah, B minor, B minor major seven, B minor seven, E9. And a couple of ways you can play this, I'm gonna show you, we'll jump around to the end. This is a cool alternate way to do it. Ring finger on the seven of the, you know, the low guy. Index finger all the way back there on the four. Pinky on the seven there. Sorry, Matt Gilbert, this is a hand stretch. Now, which camera can see better? Look at my wrist. Notice I'm not like this. And notice my thumb is not off to the side. If my thumb is off to the side and my palm is jammed into the guitar, I'm fucked. I can't play this chord. So when you have a tough stretch, you gotta get all nerdy about it. And be like, okay, thumb upright behind the neck. Aha, there we go. Basically, that, that one note going down. And there's our E9, 0, 7, 6, 7, 7. Yeah, again, a, you know, number one thing, I'm detouring already because I do, I'm a guitar teacher. I'm gonna share observations. People will say, they'll say this line to me, my hand's too small, my fingers are too small. No, they're not. Nine times out of ten, it has to do with what your thumb is doing. And I'm sure other YouTube guitar teachers have talked about this. So I needed that was that's the background. Now let's talk about the first lick. All right, so my purpose here was to stay as much in. blues, you know, to try and be like, all right, let's stick with the guy that we know and see how scronky we can be. So already out of the gate, rule one, make a leap. There's the first one, because I'm starting on the flat five of the key there, that eight. And then this is linear. That's like a typical blues lick, but by starting it with an oddball leap, it makes it weird sounding. Notice, by the way, now my thumb has moved up for playing bluesy licks. There's multiple postures for guitar. Blues Town, USA, and then Nerd Town. Sometimes you gotta go to Nerd Town. I think you can see that eight, seven, nine. Yeah, you can see it. Seven, nine, seven. That's the first lick. And then I kind of am like, you can hear motifically that's similar. Seven, ten, seven. Hang on that. There's another leap though. 10, nine, jump it to this 10 here. So that whole first lick. Other technical thing that we'll mention, I'm keeping this hand on the strings to, to help choke string noise, especially when bending. And that's just 404 because that's, you know, that's part of an E chord. That's not necessarily part of the, 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 less, the mission here, but it is cool. And then another leapy lick. It's, you know, it sounds very out of key, but it's not. Seven, up top, jump it to the flat five again. So I'm using a lot of that interesting scronky flat fifth note. There, there he goes, 10, nine, seven, land it. So you're like, oh, that's not that weird. But again, jumping octaves. Jump to that seven, then jump all the way down again to the flat five. <laughs> That's weird. 
And then, yeah, my pinky's on this 10 here, and I leap all the way to the other side for an O and a 9, which that actually works out to be the ninth of the key, so lick 2. Ah. Very scronky. Uh, again, yeah, it's like partially linear, but then you're like, ah, let me make it not too linear. Let me do, it, do a jump in there somewhere. By the way, there's slow down gears in YouTube over here or over here, depending on what device you're on. Spacebar pauses, arrows go forward and back. So you can be like, whoa, what did Eric just say? Let me go back, forward, back, forward, okay. Then the next lick is, yeah, me getting really out there by thinking rhythmically, scronkily. Yes, these are technical terms. So that's a three sets of quarter note triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, ba da da And that, that helps with the weirdness. Open B. Again, jumping to the flat five, eight, nine. So that's kind of linear. Open G string, totally wrong note, not even really in the blue scale. Oops, but it's allowed. So jump to that flat five, the 10th fret, jump to the octave again, the seven up top, and another octave, and then a, so that lick. Weird. And then I, instead of doing quarter note triplets, I do eighth note triplets. Just on this, this F sharp note, the seventh note of my B string. Watch this hand with the picking. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, bam. So while the accent is in threes, the hand is going in, in you know, the way that it moves. So that actually, if, if your picking hand isn't so good, that in itself is a week of practice. Down, two, three, up, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, bam. And then... All right. Um, okay, so then, yeah, then this is just, just I don't know where these came from, just thinking leapily. 10-10, ten, ten, again, yeah, playing, you know, lean heavily on the flat five. is like, I've mentioned this in other videos, one of the number one ways to sound verbose, scronky. 10-10 ten, ten on the B and the G. And I started to think, well, what if I climbed up, but then climbed the other way and went the other way, so it's counterpoint. This 10th fret is totally out of the key. That's a C natural in the key. That's, that's dead wrong. <laughs> but it's kind of awesome. And then the 9 goes up. And I might push this 10 just a little bit. And then just a blues bend. And that 12 there. So that little lick. Down. I gotta say, detour, this SG, this is a 2011 that my buddy, will mention at the end, my buddy Ron let me borrow. It sings up on these high bends. None of my fenders sing like this. And I've owned several Les Pauls too, and they don't sing quite like this one. This one's a, this one's a brick, man. So that's just a blues bend up there on that 12. And then a higher one on the 17. So yeah, you'd have this one. And then this is the most messed up lick that, that I messed up the most takes in this. Uh, this, the, you know, it's supposed to go one, two, three, four. But I can guarantee that's not what I ended up playing. What this lick comes from is, I remember, I don't know, I think it was Mike Eyde, one of the professors at Berkeley who taught the country guitar class. This is a silly staircase trick. It's totally out of key, or mostly out of key. Eh, it's three quarters out of key. It's just making this shape again and again. It's like a trick for playing out, and so I'm playing around with it. That's what it's supposed to be. So the first half of it is coming in on the end of beat four. So I'm seeing this one, then that one, so it goes. 
numbers? I'm not going to say the fret numbers because it's annoying. So just watch my fingers. I think you can see them. First one. And then a 7-10. I release it and then it's supposed to go. Which again, there's some notes that are out of key. So it comes down from the bend, seven, eight, which is major third, that's not right. Hits that seven again, hits this nines, and then my brain's like, ooh, I see this staircase. But I'm pretty sure that whichever take I just used in the intro is gonna be different. That's gonna be on the tab, whichever one works. But this is what it was supposed to be. Weird lick, and then I go to the, 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 the chord progression. And notice, okay, so now let's talk about stuff. Notice the slap back. That's a big part of, of to me, the Rabo sound. I think he actually uses digital delay, one of the little boss gray boxes. I forget which one it is, the DD, I don't know one of those um the main thing for for getting and you know this is useful you know usually just in minor keys when you want to sound weird the main thing is do i have the, the like the scrap paper i'll just talk about it think this way you have leaps and you have linear and so you could do things where you're like okay let me think like a, a note a leap and then like three more linear notes or the opposite three linear notes and then a leap so that's two options to think about. Or, um, and then is the leap going up or down? So you kind of have four different things to think about aside from working on, on you know, this lesson, uh, which I think is, you know, more useful. To, like, I, I think it's, you know, yeah, you can learn the licks I did if you like them, but I, I'd rather you just be like, hmm, three notes and then a leap, okay. Hmm, what about a leap and then three notes? What about a leap down and three notes? Another leap down and then three notes. Uh, let's think, pick a weird one. You know, I mean, just, just doing stuff like that. It's crazy how hard this is to do. The brain really wants things to go in a straight line. And so it's really weird to be like, to try and teach your brain to like ra almost randomly jump to other parts in the scale. Um, so now let's do the, uh, the, the talk. Okay, the lesson today is brought to you by String Joy. Get some joy out of your strings. I mean, it's not paid promotion. They sent me a couple of packets of, uh, of strings to try out. They are interesting because String Joy's thing is that um, they are a little bit higher tension. Like I think the B string and the E string are slightly thicker, which makes them really great for chords. If you're a bender, you might not like that slightly increased tension on this guitar because I don't know it well. I strung it up with the String Joy 10 to 48. So I'm like, oh, this is great. But I mean, I don't know this guitar well, so I don't know how much, how different it was. And this is, okay, thanks to my buddy Ron. Uh, Ron Liberti, you might know him as the frontman of the punk band Pipe. He also plays guitar in Cold Cream, or you've probably seen his rock posters around um, because he does really great uh, silkscreen work for, for just about any indie band that you could have thought of. And Ron lives around the block. My friends are so nice to me. Like I posted on Instagram, like a picture of like my nine guitars and just ruminating aloud was like, gee, I don't have anyone with P90s. And like, yeah, a bunch of my friends messaged me and were like, you could just borrow mine, man. I'm like, you guys. And so Ron just lives around the block. So I, I, I went over and borrowed this thing. It's a brick, man. 2011 model. Somebody put on locking tuners so it holds really well. Yes, it has neck dive. Look at that. You know, totally does. But you put your hand like this and you're not going to notice it. And something magical about the single P90 pickup in an SG. It's funny, I've had Les Pauls that don't sing like this one does. Did I cover everything that I need to talk about today? Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching my videos. 
clicking on my stuff, buying my downloads, supporting me on Patreon because I don't put ads on my channel. I hate them so much. <laughs> so if you see an ad on my channel, that's because it was put there by the robot and the money goes to the publisher. I just, you know, I don't, you know, no shade on people who put ads on their channel. Everybody's just trying to make a living. But I'm like, if I can avoid that one more thing, I'll do that. So I rely on the generosity of others. Yeah, all right. Talk to you later. <laughs>